This game is one of the most boring, monotonous, repetitive shooters I have ever played. Yet it came out of the same studio that made Time Splitters. Free Radical is a legendary studio, making games such as the Time Splitters franchise, and they spawned from the original Rare studio that made Goldeneye and Perfect Dark. So how did they end up making this? The game that would put them out of business. This game was the last game Free Radical ever made. Before we look at Haze as a game, we need to look at its development cycle because it was a little troubled. It was announced in E3 2006, and at this time it was originally supposed to be a third-person action-adventure game. But halfway through development, Ubisoft made them change the game to a first-person shooter to compete with more mainstream games in the market like Call of Duty and more specifically, Halo. Keep in mind, this game came out in 2008, which means most of its development was happening somewhere between 2005 till its launch. At this time, Halo was the game. Call of Duty's breakout success was in 2007 with Call of Duty 4. Before that, Halo ruled everything. And even in 2007, Halo still was the main game. Halo 3 came out in 2007, and this was the biggest media launch of all time. That includes movies. It's probably difficult for kids nowadays to understand how big Halo was at that time. Halo was bigger back then than Fortnite is now. It just controlled everything. So it would make sense that they'd want to compete with Halo, but trying to force your game to become the Halo killer and intentionally changing things during development is not how you should do that. And yes, a lot of the media deemed it as quote-unquote the Halo killer, and like anything else that's supposed to be the quote-unquote Halo killer, it failed horribly. Hayes was originally supposed to come out on both PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and PC at the same time, but it was turned into a PS3 exclusive for some reason Ubisoft made, probably Sony gave them money, who really knows. It was supposed to be a timed exclusive, so it was going to come out on both Xbox 360 and PC, but it flopped so poorly on PS3 that they abandoned those ideas entirely. This game's reception was horrible no matter where you went. It came out in 2008, and look at these review scores. Metacritic, 55 out of 100. Edge, 5 out of 10. Eurogamer, 4 out of 10. Game Informer, 6.25 out of 10. You get the point, this game was not received well at all. And I would honestly say these reviews are generous. I would have gave this game a 2 out of 10. It's that bad. But truth be told, Haze was not the only thing that killed Free Radical Design. At this same time, Free Radical was working on Star Wars Battlefront 3, which was cancelled when the game was almost done. The cancellation of Star Wars Battlefront 3, and Haze flopping horribly, left the Free Radical going bankrupt. This studio would eventually go on to become Crytek UK, underneath Crytek, but Crytek had their own financial issues, and then eventually they would go on to make Dambuster Studios. So in a way, Free Radical still exists, but how much of that studio is truly left over from the old Rare days, who really knows? There's still a small glimmer of hope that we may get another Time Splitters game, but I'm really not holding my breath. And yes, I know about Time Splitters Rewind, but that's been a long time coming, and I don't hold my breath for big projects like that because who knows if we're ever going to actually see it. Don't get me wrong, I would love to. That would be amazing for me. That would be like when Black Mesa finally released, I was ecstatic, but I didn't expect it to. I'm just trying not to make myself disappointed and sad, okay? But so far I've talked about everything except why Haze was bad, so here we go. The plot was intended to be a war is bad type of plot, which I usually like these if they're written well. Spec Ops line is a great idea. They generally end up being a little more depressing and down to earth, which I'm all for, but Hayes' plot is written so poorly that this idea is laughable. You play the game as Shane Carpenter, a soldier for Mantell. Mantell is never really properly explained. It's obvious that Mantell is a big military or a part of it, but you never really see much more than that. You don't see the higher-ups, you don't see the general, you don't see who's running the military, you don't really have the big, full story of what Mantell is. Instead, all you know is that all the soldiers, including yourself, are doped up on the substance called Nectar. Imagine the American military, but everyone in the military is on meth. It's clear from the very beginning of the game that these aren't the good guys. Even though they don't directly say it, just listen to them. Why doesn't the general tell that skin coat guy to go suck some balls? He doesn't need to. The general sent us here. That's his message. But I'd still love to hear him say it. Go suck some balls, skin coat. Yeah! Yeah, wait till we get our hands on him. We'll fucking show him what our fucking people think about skinning people and fucking eating people. Yeah! We stormed this place a few weeks back. All we found were empty hands. Empty hands? Why do I teach you boys? An empty hand is just a grip away from holding a gun. So? You gotta take them down before they can pick it up! Boosh!
your crackheads that speak like generic bro dudes, and this becomes incredibly old. This is some of the worst writing I've seen in any game. And generally, the few times I say that, I mean the story is just written poorly and the plot's hard to understand. But in this case, the story's written poorly and the plot's hard to understand, yes, but it's also painful to listen to. It's genuinely cringeworthy to listen to this dialogue. Why is the entire army filled with generic frat boys? Why do they speak like this? What? Who wrote this? Meanwhile, the people you're shooting while you're on this side are just third world people in South America. The plot on this side even defends ethnic cleansing. They really were not trying very hard when it comes to the whole who's in the morally right part here. So as completely predicted, halfway through the game you swap to the other side. As it turns out, Mentel is just there to get drugs. They're just taking over the third world country to take drugs for themselves and that's it. That's the entire story. Drugs are bad. Big military dude is bad. They're taking all our stuff. Oh, also, they're kind of killing us. The only real notable thing to add here is that apparently this drug kind of blocks their mind from really seeing the bad things they're doing. This drug even makes it so they can't see the dead properly. However, those yellow suits they're wearing constantly administer this drug, so they'll never really know. It's like there's a few decent ideas they have scribbled in there, but everything else is so poorly written. And the same thing can be said for the graphics. There's actually a few decent things artistically, like the yellow suits look okay and sort of pop from everything else, and the guns are designed in a way that look interesting, but everything else looks awful. This game came out in 2008 as a PS3 exclusive, and I mean, for that time it doesn't look that much worse than the average, but it definitely looks subpar. It's not necessarily that the graphics seem bad, the game just looks unfinished. The only environment that looked good in the entire game was the rainforest you see at the very beginning. Everything else just looks like they said, eh, good enough, ship it. And on top of this, the game came out around that time. That time where every shooter had to be brown. There's no color in so many of these areas. So throughout most of these environments, you're staring at just empty brown hills. Or grey corridors. There's a lack of detail, everything looks the same, it looks like it doesn't even have enough cover. It's like you're playing the alpha of the game. And I already mentioned everything as is looked subpar, so this makes it look extra bad. I mean seriously, even for 2008, these textures don't look very good. The only things that actually look passable for that time are the weapons, the weapon animations, and I guess the yellow suits. On top of this, the game runs at 30fps, which I guess is expected for a PS3 game, but it doesn't match that all the time, and you'll get some frame rate drops. And for how bad this game looks, it takes a little bit too long to load. Now it's not like GTA 5 on consoles bad, but it still doesn't look very good and it shouldn't be taking this long to load. So you have a game that looks like it's unfinished, looks subpar for its time, and takes too long to load. The gameplay does not fare much better. At least I do have one nice thing to say about the gameplay though. As I mentioned, the weapon designs and animations actually look okay. They have shades of Free Radical Past, they do sort of remind me of the older Time Sitter games at times. And the base gunplay does feel okay to shoot. Enemies don't take a million bullets to kill, the guns sound okay, even if they do use some stock sounds here and there, and the reload animations are fairly smooth. But that's where all the good ends. Unfortunately, even if you liked this base gunplay, it's going to get very repetitive very fast. You use the same 7 or 8 guns throughout the entire game, usually only the same 3 or 4, and you fight the same enemies the whole game. This makes a game that is shorter than average feel twice as long as it should be. On top of this, a lot of the missions are very clearly padded out. You have plenty of defense missions where you have to kill a certain amount of enemies while enemies pour in at you. You have plenty of missions where you have to defend a certain thing slowly moving along and make sure it doesn't get destroyed. And most of those missions come toward the end of the game. And the last mission is the worst offender of them all. The last mission was incredibly rushed. You even teleport numerous times while you're on a rail. I'm not editing anything here, this is just how the game works. Why did I even teleport? What was the point? Could I just not drive to the other side of this carrier? This is supposed to be the big climax of the game, and yet it feels like an unfinished alpha. I spent most of this level wandering around trying to figure out where the hell do I go. This game was not playtested well enough at all. They even had to add in some of that stupid six axis bullshit. I hate the six axis mechanics, I always have, and this one is one of the worst offenders. Thankfully, they don't really use it much. This dumb gimmicky nonsense I'm talking about is when you get lit on fire to put yourself out, you have to shake the controller like a fucking idiot. Might as well just turn off my PS3 and go jerk my dick. Same action, more fun. But thankfully, you only see enemies with flamethrowers at one point in the entire game. That's it. Never again. Which is good, because you don't have to do the six axis nonsense, but also means that the game has even less variety. What's disappointing is that the first part of the game is actually better than the later parts of the game. Playing as Mantell, as annoying as all the people on there are, 
is just more fun, because you have access to that yellow suit, which constantly administers nectar to you, which does change the gameplay. You can hold down X to administer nectar, which is what that bar in the bottom left is. Enemies will become highlighted, you will become faster. It does change how things play, and this can be interesting. You also have an extra sort of visor zoom thing, sort of like what you would have in Halo. The problem is this kind of makes the game a little too easy. But still, at least it adds something different. But about 35%, 40% through the game, you swap sides, and you never get access to this ever again. Instead, it becomes more a game about using nectar against the enemies. And in all reality, all this actually means is that you can use nectar grenades to make them overdose on nectar so they go crazy and start killing their allies, and that's it. The base mechanics don't really change a whole lot. The game is basically the same no matter what side you're playing on, but now you don't have access to Nectar. If all of this sounds boring to you, it is. And this is all the game has going for it. Thankfully, this on its own isn't aggravating, it's just boring and repetitive. However, where the game starts getting aggravating and starts testing your patience to the point of you saying this is one of the worst games I've ever fucking played in my life are the driving sections. Since it wanted to compete with Halo, it had to have driving sections. These are clearly not playtested well at all, and you will die numerous times not knowing what the hell you're supposed to do. Maybe they reminds you have to somehow get by, it's not really made clear how you're supposed to do it because they seem to kill you no matter what. Apparently if you stop and back up, they'll blow up in front of you and you won't take damage, which I don't feel is the way you're supposed to do that, but... Oh well. And these things control so poorly that it's hard to drive in any way at all. Every single vehicle section in this game was awful. And not just awful in the boring way, but awful in the aggravating way. It got to a point where as soon as I saw a vehicle, I groaned, because I knew I was going to have to drive and get into another one of these sections that would kill me over and over, leaving me trying to figure out what the fuck I'm supposed to do. These missions are the missions that truly confirmed this game as the worst PlayStation 3 exclusive I have ever played. And don't get me wrong, this game has plenty of other problems as well. A lot of technical bugs especially. Like a person that just won't die. It's like, have you ever looked at my channel? <laughs> Heck. This guy is impervious. What the? You can't, he cannot die. Literally can't die. Game of the year. LOL! I'm fine. Voice acting. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck you. What is this dialogue? But one of the more annoying problems is just that there's no options. Now keep in mind this is a PS3 game, so you're going to have to use a PS3 controller, and a controller is never going to be perfect for shooters, but games can make it work, Halo has. This game doesn't even try. You can't change the sensitivity at all. There's no options to do this. So if you don't like the base sensitivity, well, too bad, get used to it. Thankfully for me, the base sensitivity wasn't the worst thing in the world, but I still wanted to turn it down slightly. There is an option that says auto-aim, but I don't know what this does. There's not really a snap to target option like, say, the Call of Duty games had, and it doesn't seem to be referring to aim assist, so I don't really know what it's supposed to do. In fact, aiming in this game is difficult and I think the only reason I'm able to do it at all is because it feels like the enemies have really big Counter-Strike style hitboxes, where if you shoot anywhere near them it's kind of generous and you still sort of hit them. And the enemies also don't take too many bullets, so they'll go down pretty quick. If not for this, shooting at anything would be difficult. And this isn't a technical bug, but it's something that will get on your nerves very quickly. The AI doesn't ever shut up! Whether it's the enemy bro dude saying random frat boy things in the distance, or usually, and more annoyingly, you'll have a squad following you that will say something every 10 seconds, usually reminding you not to forget about your promise about Marino. Shut the hell up! Remember your promise to Marino! Take courage, my friend! Those junkies are in for some real trouble! The promise hand will not fail! Remember your promise to Marino! God, I really wish, I kind of just wish my friendlies would die, because they won't stop talking. If anyone else made this game, I wouldn't really think much of this. I would just put it off as another failed first-person shooter, but the fact that Free Radical made this game made it so sad for me. 
I loved the Time Slitters franchise. I grew up playing Time Slitters 2 so much. So to see where they ended up and what finally put them in the bankruptcy is just depressing. Thankfully, they didn't all lose their jobs and most of the studios still seem to be over a damn buster. So who knows what that will turn into, but if only they still had the full freedom to do things like the original Time Splitters games. With that all said, I don't have much more to add to this. I knew how bad this game was, and yet it still surprised me by being even worse than how bad I thought it was. Thank you for all watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. A huge shout out goes to the people that watch me play this game or struggle through this game over on my Twitch and all my Twitch subs and people over on Patreon. If you guys want to help me, you can do that by going to either of these places. I will be streaming, finally, Resistance 3 next, so I'll have that done. So if you want to come hang out, go check out my Twitch. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next video.